Hey, how's it going everyone? This is YLAM here. In today's Fuji Friday, I definitely have a few news stories that I want to cover. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The first one that I do want to talk about is DJI's new gimbal, which is the Ronin SC. So this is a smaller brother to the Ronin S, which means that it's going to be able to lift a lighter camera system, 4.4 pounds to be exact. But that's more than enough for our Fuji film systems. And the reason why I'm talking about it is because it's going to be able to support Fuji film camera bodies, which is a great thing. Thing. And not only can it support the modern camera body, so I'm talking about the X-T3, X-T30, X-H1, but it can also support the X-T20 and also the X-T2. So we're getting a lot of support for this particular gimbal, which is great. The only thing that's not really great is that if you dive into the documentation, it only works for photography right now, or at least that's what the documentation says. It only does capturing photos and triggering autofocus and further down it tells you the lens support that it has and there's a pretty wide range of lenses that support more than enough for what you need when you first start out but what I'm really hoping for here is that DJI actually continues to expand the firmware updates and then give us more support on the Fujifilm system but really when you think about it we have come a really long ways for these Fujifilm camera systems before we could never get any support for the Fujifilm camera bodies and now companies like DJI is supporting the camera bodies through their firmware through their gimbal system which is super great so hopefully we'll continue to make inroads on these accessories now before moving on to the next subject there is one thing that i want to talk about really quick on this channel as you know i really do recommend getting a lot of used gear in fact over here this 10 to 20 50 to 140 and 18 to 135 the 18 to 55 and i also got two more down here i'm not going to say all of them but when I actually recommend camera systems or gears to these camera systems, I always recommend that you actually get them used because it saves you a lot of money and there's plenty of good equipment out there. And most of this stuff is built really durably. So when you buy used, it's still got plenty of lifespan left in it. There are a couple of exceptions to this and camera gimbals are actually one of them because the camera gimbals, the motors on those are very delicate. If you don't balance the camera properly on that camera gimbal, it can severely wear out one of the motors which would significantly lower the lifespan of that particular device. So that's something that I'm well aware of because I've been plenty of shoots where, you know, things are kind of in a scramble and things just cobbled together. And sometimes you don't balance it perfectly, which is not a good thing for these gimbals. So for a lot of the stuff that I do recommend on channel buying use, camera gimbals is not one of them. When I buy this DJI SC gimbal, which I'm highly interested in, especially if we get more firmware support, I'm definitely going to buy it brand new because I know how delicate those those motors are so my recommendations to you and this is the few times where I actually recommend buying brand new that's just a quick recommendation for you if you're interested in any camera gimbals and if you're thinking about buying use the next news story that I do want to cover, and this comes directly from Fuji Rumors, one of the sites that I really love to read. And they have some photos of patent pending stuff that Fujifilm has submitted. And a lot of it is actually pretty interesting. So I'm just going to post them up and talk a little bit about them. The first one that we're seeing right here, this is a very interesting blend of basically digital technology and analog technology in one. So you still have the analog feel of the dials, but it's going to a digital readout, which means that we're going to get infinite customization of these command dials which is super interesting because while I do love the command dials like say on this X-T3 every once in a while especially if I'm doing something specific I do wish that I could actually adjust these command dials to do other things I can give you a pretty easy example uh, on certain shoots we don't really touch ISO we set it to a baseline and then we never touch it for the entire shoot so if we can actually just set the ISO internal to the camera and then move this command dial to do something else that's a little bit more useful that would be something Something that would be super interesting to be able to do and having this type of technology might be able to do it i really doubt that they're going to do it on the xt3 but it was handy it's probably going to be more on a camera like the a series in which there could be a digital on one of these sides and then you can have a command dial it's already kind of implemented on the gfx 100 so it's definitely going to be making its way to other camera bodies maybe the xt 100 or the successor to the X-T100, but I am looking forward to actually testing that out because 
This is kind of Fuji Films blending old world and new world and pushing into different types of designs, which they seem to be very good at. So the last story that I want to cover, and it's definitely the meat of this week's video, which is the 16 to 80 F4 that's going to be coming out on September 26. It's kind of curious. They actually announced it really early. It's going to be two months before this lens actually comes out. So you have quite a long time to pre-order. Maybe Fuji Films wants a long pre-order period to see how much demand there is. And they know actually how much to scale up for it is kind of a middle of the road lens it's not quite the professional lens but it's not quite the amateur or beginner lens it kind of sits very well in the middle and the price point is actually pretty good so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the lens and the price point because that's something that's super interesting at $800, I actually think it's a pretty good value, even though it's not exactly what we call cheap. But when you compare it to the 18 to 135, this is MSRP $900. So the 16 to 80 is going to be $100 cheaper than this particular lens, which is right now the super zoom or the all in one lens that everybody talks about. And this is a really good lens, and the 16 to 80 is going to compete directly with this lens. So having this being $100 more expensive, I can definitely see sales of. Of this going down dramatically because of this lens because 100 bucks is quite a lot but we're also talking about losing quite a bit of zoom so there's going to be a heck of a decision if you're actually looking for an all one lens because both these lenses look to be pretty good and it'll be interesting to what people choose i myself will be choosing the 16 to 80 over the 18 to 135 and that's because of my hybrid nature my vlogging nature that 16 millimeters is super important to me and while the 18 millimeter is passable I much rather prefer the 16 millimeters, but this is still a really good lens and most likely I'm going to continue to keep this lens and then I'll do some compare and contrasting eventually. I know I have a lot of lens videos I need to do, but I just haven't quite figured out the format that I actually want to do these reviews in because I, I just haven't figured it out yet. Now, when we compare the 16 to 80 to the 18 to 55, I guarantee you a lot of people think that's a direct upgrade to this lens. I personally don't believe that. I think there's enough separation between those two lenses where owning both, there's actually a lot of benefits to it. This can easily be a backup lens, but it can also be a lens that you can use kind of as a prime. So at 18 millimeters at f2.8, it's still more than sharp enough for photography and video. So you can kind of treat that as a poor man's prime lens, but you can easily go up to f4 and treat this as an 18 to 55 f4 so a great backup lens if you need it to this 16 to 80 especially if you're doing professional work so again i really do think that for a kit lens this is well worth keeping even if you upgrade to bigger and better lenses so for me it's not a direct upgrade there is enough separation where i would definitely still want to own both now if we look at the 16 to 50 xc lens i do think the 16 to 80 is a direct upgrade for this lens while this is a very good and capable lens i do think that it has quite a few shortcomings and it's not really a great lens that you want to keep permanently if you want to sell this off and upgrade to that lens i would definitely recommend it i'm pretty much going to say the same exact thing for the 15 to 45 if you get a chance definitely upgrade the 16 to 80 while this is a very nice small and compact lens i personally don't like the electronic nature of it it's very noisy and while it's very capable for youtube type videos and kind of run and gun photography i personally don't think it shines enough in either of these areas to where you wouldn't want to directly upgrade to a 16 to 80. the last one that i want to talk about is the 10 to 24 f4 which is my current primary lens for any type of hybrid shooting and also vlogging because it's just very versatile i really do like putting this in 14 millimeters and vlogging myself with like i said you can get away with 18 millimeters but if you can open it up really wide especially for vlogging it really is super nice and this is my current lens that i would use with the xt3 whenever i'm vlogging and anytime i go to any special events or any place where i know i'm going to be doing vlogging i usually almost always take the xt3 with me whereas the xt30 with the 15 to 45 this is something that is a more of a daily carry and if I were to do any type of hybrid stuff, it's usually the spur of the moment type stuff. So while I do love carrying this camera on a daily basis, if I know I'm going to be doing anything planned, I usually take the X-T3 and the 10 to 24 because this is a very nice combo. 
Now, I will say though, once the 16 to 80 comes out and I do get my hands on it, I do see me replacing the 10 to 24 with the 16 to 80 because it's just a much more versatile lens. They're both F4 lenses. This one is a bit bulky the way that it is because it does go all the way out to 10 millimeters. I don't particularly need 10 millimeters. It is nice some of the times, but I much rather have the versatility of the 16 to 80. So I personally am really looking forward to 16 to 80 because I think it's actually going to be the perfect travel lens, vlogging lens that I've been looking for. All of these lenses that I just went over, I use them on and off because there are certain scenarios where I would prefer one over the other. But with this lens, I might be able to simplify my life and that's what I'm really looking forward to. Now, a lot of people, out there are going to break down the components of this lens and talk about its key features and try to interpret it that's really not my style i really want to get the lens in my hand i want to be able to use it for the entire day i want to be able to show you what i can capture with it for both photo and videos and really demo to you what this lens can do in a run and gun setup because that's just personally my style other than that i'm really not going to talk about aperture blades or lens coatings or ois hopefully the autofocus on this is going to be really good from the literature that they have released it seems like it's going to be that way so I'm definitely really excited about this lens please let me know what you think about the 1680 is it something that you're interested in you can definitely tell I'm excited about but that's all I have this week thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video